and welcome you to my another video about electricians tools today more about the DIY instruments rather than something professional uh, we will show uh, this oscilloscope like waveform viewer that looks like Tamagotchi and uh, costs approximately $22 uh, then uh, this PCB oscilloscope like thing uh, for almost the same price then it will be Mastool MDS8207 uh, for $100 from Banggood and then this Mastool MT8208 for like $50 that's half the price uh, also from Banggood uh, then uh, this $4 signal generator and a little $10 inverter bonus then a huge inverter bonus and also PWM driver uh, this topic was urged uh, from my fans on my main Czech channel and since these devices are used worldwide then I have decided to record also this English video on this English channel. Before we jump on these uh, we need to make one thing clear or 11 things clear. <laughs> there are many many principles uh, and concepts of oscilloscope devices and they all differ significantly. Obviously uh, this PCB would have different inerts from my tabletop Hantec. Yes, of course, one would guess that. Uh, but also these two meters, yes. At first uh, sight they only differ with in one number and in better display, but they are nowhere near similar. Nowhere near similar. They are absolutely different inside, uh, which makes them suitable uh, slash unsuitable for certain jobs. These categories, I made 11 of them <laughs> uh, to cover most devices one could encounter. Uh, they differ heavily in what they are able to do. First is Tamagotchi and PCB. Uh, they are no oscilloscopes as they should be rather called waveform viewers. Uh, they mostly have just one microcontroller, uh, in this case it's STM32, and they use its integrated analog to digital converter. Uh, fortunately these STM32s have quite good ADCs, but of course it's nowhere near any like 500 mega sample converters used in basic oscilloscopes. Uh, this sort of waveform viewers uh, is mostly up to 50 kilohertz, uh, while OK usability is up to 40 kilohertz max. Uh, these frequencies are only good for audio or some low frequency PWM drives. Second is fast measuring multimeter. Uh, these are just like any other multimeter with the only difference of having the main integration ADC faster or with adjustable acquiring speed. Uh, or they may have special true RMS converter and then classic converter. There also may, may be other principles but I am unaware of them. Uh, these multimeters include but are not limited to Mastool MT8206 uh, which I don't have here, and Mastool MT8208. Uh, also, previously reviewed Hayoki DT4261 uh, falls within this category, uh, although it is industrial grade multimeter, and these allow you to see graph of what they measure, and they also perform FFT, and they measure THD with quite good precision from what I've tested in industrial environment. But Hayoki won't be subject of this video, since this video is for DIY hobbyists and not professionals, so we will leave this one uh, to rest. These multimeters are like more precise and more multimeter-like variant of this category. They usually stay within 1 MHz max, and their max frequency is heavily dependent on the device type. Third device is multimeter with basic scope-like thing in one box, like this Mastool MDS8207. Uh, this separates the multimeter and the oscilloscope part. Uh, as multimeter part has its own precision integration ADC and the oscilloscope part has its own fast acquiring ADC with FPGA to further work with the data and use the RAM memory uh, to store the data and then gather it from there and display it on the display. It's like a classic oscilloscope but stripped to the bare functional minimum and fit into multimeter chassis alongside with legacy multimeter inerts. 
so it's like two in one but not that separated. Port device is quite similar to this one uh, but with difference that the multimeter part is separated and galvanically isolated from oscilloscope part. A uh, good example is Ovon, Hantek and Mastool. Uh, the oscilloscope part is more similar to classic oscilloscopes because they use better ADCs. Uh, it has greater sample memory, it finally uses B and C connectors and has overall more usability when it comes to scope part. Uh, usually these are two channels and may even include function generator. Smart decision as uh, scope uh, and function generator usually go side by side. Uh, this device can be competitor to DIY great classic bench scope and many DIY hobbyists may find themselves in situation of deciding between these. Fifth category is portable battery operated scope. Uh, they are quite usual in professional field, although their functionality is limited, maybe even worse than the previous category of the better oscilloscope like multimeters. These also sometimes have just one channel. Six type as I call them tabletoids, are tablet style oscilloscopes, a huge screen and controls around the screen, uh, often with touchscreen of course. Uh, sometimes these look like mp4 player and sometimes they look like big tablet like FNIRC 1013D, a huge screen for good readability, portability and it doesn't take much space. It's battery operated, of course. Well, good. Also, a little functionality limited, but with and with not that comfortable controls, but good all in one device that is small and battery operated. Seventh is classic scope as we know it, but with battery option. It brings to the table every good parameter of classic bench scope, uh, like big display, lots of powerful functions and perfect controls because they have these physical knobs. It doesn't matter if you have a two or four channel, you should have knobs and buttons for every channel separately, otherwise the controls would be ineffective for work. The battery option in these, uh, however, uh, well, it makes the price climb way too high to be considered DIY great oscilloscopes. Eighth category is finally our classic bench scope. Again, perfect controls, effective, implements many functions including FFT, math, cursors, acquire menu, external trigger, just these things. Uh, these bench scopes are near perfect but have two major issues. First is portability and second is the fact that they are connected to mains. Uh, the PE, protective earth from main socket, goes straight to all these BNC connectors and also to this output for calibration. So they are galvanically connected to ground and also to neutral wire, of course, via uh, <laughs> RCD uh, if you have it installed, but you should have it installed. Uh, so this may represent a problem if you are probing around something that is connected to mains, uh, then on the primary side, on the side that is not galvanically isolated, you may cause quite hard short circuit with these. So the cheapest option is to buy isolation transformer uh, with one to one ratio, for example, so you can measure something that is connected to mains. But still these BNCs have come on ground, although they are not connected to the ground from your socket. Uh, if you need more channels and you need them galvanically isolated one from another, well, okay, go ahead, sell your car, maybe even your house and buy oscilloscope differential probes. These are the solution and they are expensive as hell. Uh, now about my scope, uh, it's Hantec DSO2D10. Uh, it's slow as hell but I still like the functions. Uh, well I actually was thinking of this Hantec for $210 from Banggood versus Keysight for like three times the price. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Keysight is another level of course, uh, it's perfectly smooth operation, everything is polished, no bugs, but well, 200 kilo samples? 200 kilo samples in the year of 2022? It's nowhere near capacity you need for single shots. This has 8 megabytes, Keysight just 200 kilo. You can't zoom anything. Nint category is MSO. Mixed signal scope. If you probe around microcontrollers, you may find use for such a scope that implements also logic analyzer in it. 
Uh, tent is PC scope. It's a tiny box with BNCs and with USB port. It relies on your computer to set or adjust it and also to show the waveform. One can connect a Windows tablet to it and have it with convenient controls. Um, and it also doesn't take that much space on your desk. But guess what? Its functionality depends on your PC software. If something happens, you are left with just nothing more than a dummy weight. It's it may be source of parts of, or spare brick into your house. If your wall somehow breaks, then you have spare brick. You can put it there with cement and, and it's done. But uh, you can't do anything more with it if the software is unreliable. Well, uh, that's why uh, we need to really consider all the cons of these. And if you definitely want one, buy from well-known quality brand like Keysight slash Agilent or Tektronics or Keatly, GW, Instec, Rigol and such. If you buy Ovon, if you buy Huntec, if you buy Fnirsi, if you buy Unity and such companies, uh, they are well-known for their shitty PC software with a lot of dependencies uh, of third-party software. To be honest, my Huntec also supports PC communication. But I haven't managed to get it working. And it relies also on Keysight software. There is also one more thing that these are not responsible for. And it is Windows driver updates that may, without your approval or without even you knowing it, fuck up perfectly working software. So PC scopes, for me, it's big no. Just my opinion, but, but uh, the less dependencies, the better. 11th. And the final category are specialized scopes like for Ethernet communication, catch or RF signal analysis, uh, GSM networking. They can even generate some protocols or frames to test something. Just that special stuff. Uh, usually they are made by Rodeon Schwartz. And uh, we as DIY hobbyists don't need anything like this. It's just so you know they exist. Let's finally have a look at something. Uh, this PCB scope thingy. It costs $22 without plexiglass case, just naked as it is. It's powered from DC barrel connector, 2.1 mm, and it requires between 9 to 12 volts nominal. Uh, there is more into that as my piece is a little faulty and something just right before ADC most probably op amp has offset. It just can't be adjusted. So uh, if I power it from 7 volts, which is bare minimum, for these 5 volt stabilizers, uh, the offset is gone <laughs> out of nowhere. Uh, but it may become unstable, I guess. So, adding more capacitors on 5 volt rays should be considered. It can safely work even at 12 volts, but these uh, stabilizers would get pretty hot. A silicon blob should do the trick. Let's connect my power bank with step up converter to 12 volts and turn on the Power bank. So now it's running. Uh, left is BNC signal input, and above the display lies PWM output. Uh, default is 1 kHz with 30% duty cycle. It's perfect for probe calibration or a signal source. You can adjust it up to 80 kHz and the duty between 0 to 100. So nice generator. Only the output impedance is in kilo ohms and the output VPP is 3.3 volts. So it's like signal only. Uh, beware as both these solder points are same potential. Although one is rectangular and one is circular, they are both same potential. You need to get the ground from this. Uh, coupling switch here for ground, AC and DC is okay. That's how it should be. But the vertical amplification switches, no. Please no. We have uh, 10 times multiplication here and most significant digit settings here. Uh, 1, 2 and 5. It may be perfect to logarithmically cover the entire spectrum with constant accuracy, but these separated controls... Uh, just having to switch two switches to increase or decrease by one step, it's bad. It's really bad. Uh, On-screen measurement can be turned on or off with long press OK switch. Uh, max, min, average, good. RMS, perfect. Peak, peak, perfect. Frequency, duty and period, good to have. Uh, we have no rise and no fall time measurement and it doesn't have any cursors. So you won't be able to measure that anyway. Well, 
there is one method, one old school method of just using this grid to measure something, but it's inaccurate. This cell button is for selection on what to adjust. A trigger level is adjustable, but it stays in the same place even if you change the input uh, vertical levels. So please keep in mind this thing. It also sometimes happens that the trigger got stuck above the screen uh, and the only way to get it back was to play with vertical position. Uh, then we have trigger mode, it's auto, you want that most of the cases, then normal, without R, so just normal, and single. And that's that. So let's leave it on auto. Uh, we can also set slope press up button for rising slope or press down button for fading slope uh, but that trigger is strange anyway but what i like about the trigger is that the tricked condition is indicated by this led next cell button press gets us to pwm output setting uh, the output outputs all the time uh, then next cell adjust vertical position and the controls are like you have to be clicking all the time, all the time, because if you long press it, it just, it's slow. It's so goddamn slow. The controls are really, really, really bad. Next cell press gets us to the time base adjustment. Regarding the time base, you can comfortably see up to 30 to 40 kilohertz, and the bandwidth of this device is 50 kilohertz, which you almost wouldn't be able to see, uh, as the waveform would be too narrow and too stacked. So these 30 kilohertz render this PCB's copy thingy useful in audio frequencies field and like nothing much more. Uh, you can uh, service or adjust power amplifiers, preamps, things like this. Original scope like PCB was developed by a company and then this is its copy. Its heart is STM32F103 and the original PCB works better, but this one is close to it and I'm not sure uh, what's the brand of the original one and if you order it if you will get the genuine PCB or just this clone. Schnersi 150 with its Tamagotchi like look is very similar to this previous PCB. They both have the same abilities and same parameters. Fnersi is however totally different construction. The controls got overhaul and instead of listing through hundreds of parameters with cell button, we can access them directly with 1, 2, 4 respective button presses. The rotary encoder adds to the comfort of operation and finally, the vertical amplification is software adjustable by incrementing or decrementing, not these dump components. Combinations. Uh, here we get to the functionality, which is limited in my particular case. The PWM output works okay, but the scope part doesn't. Uh, I bought it some time ago from AliExpress and I got to test it after some time. Uh, by then, the 10 day window for warranty has expired, and I just figured out that the Fnersi is a little diesel powered, as tiny smelly smoke went out of it, and power source for minus 10 volts for internal op amp was gone. Meanwhile, I have tried sending some signals to it, of course, and now I can be pretty sure that the op amp inside must have encountered input voltage that was out of its power voltages and op amps usually don't survive this condition. Uh, this is really a reason why I like to buy more expensive stuff on Banggood as the warranty almost perfectly works there. Uh, on AliExpress you must open the package and eagerly test it as fast as possible to make the warranty claim in time. Moreover, AliExpress support is full of people who don't understand anything technical, so it has happened to me that I received, for example, uh, your example given, fake battery, and I have provided all measurements like capacity, internal resistance, discharge grubs and such. And the idiot, the idiot from support sided with the seller who claimed nonsense. And he also had no knowledge in this. And I was the case even when I was absolutely right. Because they assign people to dispute cases which they don't understand at all. So, to sum it up, if you are unsure, you can either buy from Banggood and be 95% safe, or buy from AliExpress and if it goes wrong, prepare a short speech where you explain the problem to someone who doesn't know shit about the topic, while of course defending your claim. 
Generally, for smaller things like DC conversion modules, Banggood is more expensive than AliExpress, but more expensive stuff like desk instruments costs the same or even less at Banggood. Uh, so Ali for cheap stuff and Banggood for costly stuff. Mastool MT8208 comes from Banggood, just like my 8207. But while I paid for the 8207 100 bucks some time ago, uh, the Mastool MT8208 was provided to me for free from Banggood sales promoter. So I hereby want to thank him for this piece of equipment that would otherwise cost 50 bucks. Thanks to this we can talk about one Mastool more in this video. Now to the topic. Mastool MT8208 works on the same principle as 8206, with the only difference being the newer 8208 is made better in every aspect. And moreover it has beautiful, really beautiful color LCD display. I would love to see this display on every multimeter. It's a really good display. MT8208 is however not a successor of MDS8207 as they are different meters working on different principle and with different abilities. Mastu also makes us aware of that as MDS multimeter is oscilloscope multimeter and MT is just graphical multimeter. The inner workings of this mass tool are described by the fast acquiring multimeter category. Uh, is the second one. Uh, Hayoki DT4261 is also in this category of fast acquiring meter, but uh, these two belong in opposite fields. Uh, it's different waters. One is industrial and one is DIY. As the same electronics is used for both digital measurement and also scoping, uh, you are able to scope also currents. You can scope milliamps, you can scope amps, and this multimeter is great at it. It's not usual and sometimes it may come really handy. Of course, Hayoki can do this too, but I would offend the Hayoki if I was comparing it to this one side by side. So not to offend this guy, I will put it to my right. At millivolt range, uh, we can also turn the scope on and we have vertical resolution of 30 or 100 millivolts per div while having 4 plus 4 divs vertical. Uh, the resolution of the display, well, it could be Super VGA, most probably I would say, so you would see 10 millivolt differences with ease, I would guess. Yeah, uh, at volts range, it's got 30 millivolts, 1 volt, 3 volts, etc., up to 1000 volts per div. That would mean the meter can show 4 kilovolts. I would never send anything more than 1 kilovolt to such meter. There is no way it could be safe to put 4 kilovolts here. So, <laughs> I don't know why the 1000 volts per div is even there, but it's there, so we know about it. Uh, the sampling of this multimeter would be around 10 mega samples per second, I would guess. Uh, counting pixels ain't nowhere easy, as we, <laughs> as we know the sample rate. Uh, how about bandwidth? Uh, should be around 1 megahertz, right? Well, that depends. If you use DCV range, your bandwidth is just and only 5 Hz. And ICV has 1 MHz, yes. <laughs> so not only the DCV is practically unusable for scoping, but also there is no AC coupling as the ACV has DC coupling. Yes, you must be confused. So this is for the multimeter part. Uh, millivolts are okay and they have DC coupling. Uh, DC volts are they should they shouldn't be used in scope mode and AC volts should be used in scope mode and they are for DC coupling yeah so it's like this it's unlogical but it's like this strange and confusing at the same time now let's try to adjust vertical I press range and there is no option for position which considering the absence of AC coupling is unfortunate. Uh, the amplification follows same rule as the PCB scope. Left button is to begin with 1 or 3 and the right button is for tens. That's really bad, really, really bad idea. Why the hell would someone implement vertical resolution like this? 
let's go back and go to trigger. Trigger is absolutely the same as with other tiny scope like devices or thingies. Uh, even with the level being locked on the display position, not at the actual voltage. What's definitely great to have is auto set. Just press R, wait and it's done. So compared to the previous scope like thingy, this meter has 20 times bigger bandwidth, more beautiful display, measures half the parameters and uh, has auto set. And it can save up to 10 waveforms into its internal memory. And it costs 2.5 times more money. But you also get battery power device with multimeter capabilities which work pretty well. But that's subject of another video. Uh, the brain in this device is STM32F400 that uses its integrated 12-bit ADC at 10 mega samples for both multimetry and scoping. Mastool MDS8207 may be older, slower and have not that good display, but still it's twice as expensive as this one because this has more circuitry in it. It's the third category of multimeter plus basic scope in one. The uh, brain of it is STM32F401 that uses its ADC for just multimeter functions. For scope functions, if we connect to this hole, then there is MXT2088 ADC with 100 mega samples per second and also FPGA-like circuit to further work with the fast acquired data. They are then processed by STM32 and displayed on your display. Uh, the 100 mega samples are just enough for maximum of 20 MHz sine wave, but nothing more, really. Uh, the bandwidth is however significantly bigger and the written 40 MHz could be it. Uh, my arbitrary function generator can only reach 25 MHz and I have no equipment to test that, so sorry for that, I don't know whether it's real bandwidth or not. As the circuitry is separated for scope and multimeter part, then the scope part can be closer to oscilloscope as we know it. And that's exactly this case. Not only it has separate input for this, but also through DC and through AC coupling, as it should be. Not like in here, just DC coupling at AC walls. <laughs> it's stupid. Yeah, so this is real AC coupling, this is real DC coupling, as if you had classic oscilloscope. Uh, then uh, there is this button parm. Uh, it's one of many differences between these two here. Uh, this button switches between two groups of viewed measurements. So this 8207 measures the same things as this PCB-like thingy and this FNIRC scope. And it of course measures twice as much things as this 8208. Uh, shall we press time button? Uh, we have one more option compared to this multimeter. Uh, we have adjustable time position so we can go even to left or to right with our signal so we can have a look at what was before or what goes after then the volt menu is finally as it should be you either increase or decrease not any dump multipliers the most sensitive range is however just 0.5 volt per div which is too high that's the maximum sensitivity you will get from this device maximum voltage oh the beep is different strange maximum voltage is 200 volts per div and as we have as we have uh, six divs then it's 1.2 kilovolt peak signals uh, you shouldn't of course send 1.2 kilovolts in such a device because of safety it's only rated for 1 kilovolt but uh, in my personal opinion 1.2 kilovolts should be okay yeah, compared to 4 kilovolts, surely, yeah. <laughs> so I'm not responsible for you doing it, but I think that this multimeter should withstand 1.2 kilovolts. But I would never ever in my life send 4 kilovolts into this one. A trigger here works the same as in previous cases, but this time the multimeter tells you the level on the display. Good to know that. Auto set is also present here. And if you hold the display like this or stop, yeah, 
Now it shows hold, but it's actually stop. Then with the multimeter hold it, you can use these cursors. You can use either voltage cursors. Oh, I am at the lower. This is lower cursor. This is higher cursor. You can use either voltage cursors. The beeping is annoying like hell. There is no way to move them with long press. So you need to be constantly pressing them. And yeah, that's that. And it, it, it's even worse if we use the T cursors, because then we would have to travel all the way here and all the way here, for example. So you would be like... Like if you want to get to BIOS in your PC. And this is really stupid. They should have implemented it like uh, if you long press it, then it goes faster, but it doesn't. But yeah, it has cursors, they measure uh, DT and also frequency, so good, yeah, it has them. They are not that great, but they are there and that counts. Now, let's look into my storage. 11th, no record, 10th, uh, this is a square signal with AC coupling. This is square signal with frequency of 100 Hz. It's some ugly square, if you ask me. Then it's whatever. Another whatever. Ah, if you are working around power supplies, then you may know this signal. And this is the quasi sign, like if you buy a DC to AC converter, uh, that has uh, that <laughs> it's fake sign <laughs> and this is sign as it should be now let's have a look at this four dollar function generator it gives you square from one hertz to 1.25 megahertz the frequency is not that stable then there is also circuitry that makes a sine or triangle wave from the square and these also have adjustable amplitude only thing it's counterclockwise so increase or decrease <laughs> now let's see the waveforms this is square output and we turn on the power bank and boom we have squared with ac coupling beautiful beautiful square we can move the frequency higher frequency lower frequency nice now let's use the sine slash triangle now it's triangle and now it's cropped triangle ugly one and it's small triangle we can also use this jumper to switch to sign and now we have sine wave a little cropped so let's use volt and zoom it up a little now we have beautiful beautiful sign uh, we can also try the second oscilloscope like multimeter it only has dc coupling so we will see it just this small but it's there yes it's there the display is once again really beautiful but the usability of the scope function is limited very limited from practice demonstration i have prepared for you this diy 12 volts to AC 230 volts inverter. It's one of the things where all these scope instruments would be suitable, perfectly suitable. Uh, this transformer comes from UPS, uninterruptible power supply. Its ratio is 16 to 230 or 14 to 230, depending on what wire uh, on the primary side you use. Uh, they use the 16 volts for charging and 14 volts for output when mains go out. Some UPS also have more taps, usually 14 volt tap for when battery is still charged and 12 volt tap for when battery goes low to provide more stable voltage output. But since computers and monitors use switch mode power supplies which are quite forgetful, it's not common today. Uh, transformer requires AC voltage to work, uh, usually technic frequencies for these iron core ones uh, so this board on the left uh, it comes from aliexpress and it can be bought for like ten dollars approximately and it's all in one solution that generates 
50 Hz square signal that goes to this transformer. Uh, you basically have inverter for 10 bucks and for something that comes from broken UPS. It's beautiful. Yeah, so this DIY solution can give you 200 watts long term or even more short term uh, if you increase the cooling at 10 bucks cost. I can turn up the voltage on this GVDA power supply. And now we can see the input power is 115 watts. Uh, the output voltage is 223, so let's get to 230 RMS. 222, 224, 229, 232 RMS. So now the power from the bulb is approximately 100 watts, as it's Philips 100 watt. And the power input is 123 watts, so the efficiency would be like 80% or so. Still beautiful. Now, this is the. No, this better. Hopefully, it doesn't burn. Uh, this is the voltage that goes to the transformer, is the voltage output of this board, and also voltage input for the transformer. And this is the output voltage from the transformer. Beware, this is live. Although it's not connected to ground, it's floating, but it can still electrocute you. So, this is the output. It's ugly, it's nowhere near sine wave, but it gets the transformer working. And you can see we have 233 volt RMS with 51 Hertz. Beautiful. For like 10 bucks you can have 200 watts DC to AC inverter. Oh, the fun is blowing. Uh, this GVDA power supply, I believe it was reviewed before. It's quite a good one, so I used it to power this thing. Nice. Shall we now decrease the voltage? It turns off at certain value. It should be around 10, I believe. 10.5. That's exactly the voltage when, uh, when LED exit battery is discharged. So 10.5, perfect, perfect, perfect voltage for LED exit batteries. If you want to power some motor, for example, from 12 volts and you need 230 volts, then the only solution is to get pure sine wave inverter, not these quasi sine waves. This one comes from Banggood and it says pure sine wave. Is it truth? I don't know. And I can check that. Let's turn it on. Yeah? The mask tool says it's sine. Look at this. It's beautiful sine wave. And can I also put some load on it? 100 watts. Beautiful. Nice. So yes, this inverter gives you real pure sine wave, as we have just shown. And that's what these things are great for. Now, the last thing to look at is this PWM regulator. It can be used for LED, bulb or DC commutation motor regulation. But does it work correctly? Let's have a look. Uh, this is 0%. It may be blinking on your display. It's 60p, so it's definitely blinking. Uh, now the bulb is glowing slightly. Now it's more significant. Let's give it 50% power or 50%. Uh-huh, seems to be working. But is it really PWM signal? Is it really PWM? Let's have a look. Yeah, it's rectangle. Yeah, the upper part is wider than the bottom part, so we are at some high number. Let's press PARM and we have 89% PWM, exactly what this display says. Let's decrease the value. And we can see it gets narrower and the power goes down. Now we have just 18%. Yeah, it's 18. Beautiful. So this PWM motor governor or LED driver or whatever is working as it should be. 
and we have found that out thanks to this oscilloscope multimeter. Now we have gotten to the end of this video so let's sum it up from what's available today. I wouldn't bother with the PCB and with the Tamagotchi scopey things. Uh, they are brittle when it comes to withstanding ESD overloads and everything. Yeah, They are just generally made with low quality and you never know when they fail. They both have errors. Uh, one isn't working at all almost and second has offset. And both of them require a hell of a soldering job to repair. And it's not worth it. So I wouldn't even bother with these two things. Mastool 8207 for which I thank Banggood company. Well, it's good as a multimeter and worse as a scope. Uh, it's limited, heavily limited, but it can be used to see waveforms if you just need RMS values, peak values or shape of wave. For 50 bucks, good one. For 50 bucks, yes. The price is really low. Just remember, these are just CAT2 and in reality is 250 volts, not 1000 because the fuses are SMD inside. Uh, so you can uh, probe around uh, wall outlets, uh, but nothing more, yeah? Uh, so no distribution board, just wall outlets and small circuitry on your desk. Uh, no three-phase, no distribution station, no power plant, just household use and mainly desk use for hobbies. Mastool MDS8207 uh, for 100 bucks, that's twice the price. Sounds nice. <laughs> I've, I've been using it for like two years and it's a good one. It actually gets a little closer to actual scope as you can view up to 20 MHz signals or you can use cursors, although these are uh, not that convenient, but they are there. Uh, for limited scope probing, uh, like repairing power supplies, watching transients and such, it's a good one. Regarding its multimeter capabilities, well, it's really slow, but gets everything done after all. Uh, these multimeters will be most probably reviewed also separately, in a separate video for them too, uh, because it would make this video last too long to be acceptable to watch. Uh, Banggood representative has also uh, ordered me uh, Mastool MDS8209, which is an actual oscilloscope packed with multimeter capabilities in quite compact device. The tool is however delayed as it should have been available by March and it's uh, July. So uh, <laughs> the meter is still not in warehouse. I don't know why. So let's hope uh, Mastool will get uh, this sorted out as soon as possible so we could have a look at just even better device than these two. Huge thanks to Banggood representative for this device. Uh, that was sent to me. Uh, the links are in the description below the video if you want to buy it. And uh, that's all for this video. Goodbye.